Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion on data transformation. Uh, so let's get started. So first off we need to make sure and import um, the tidyverse. And we're also going to import um, the NYC flights uh, database. So uh, let's just wait here while everything's running. All right, so library. And we're going to also do, again, NYC flights database and the 2013 data. And let me clear this out. So first off, we're going to be talking about mutate, OK, and mutation data mutations. Now, um, besides, again, uh, selecting existing columns, OK, as we've done before with the select statement, uh, we can also now add new columns that are functions of existing columns, OK? And that's what we use when we use mutate. Now, mutate adds new columns at the end of the data set. So we'll start by creating maybe a, a smaller data set, OK, so that we can uh, actually see what's going on. So let's call this uh, flights uh, small. And then so let's select uh, from flights. We want, uh, let's say, year through day. And then we want things that ends with, again, if you remember from uh, the last uh, uh, the last lecture uh, we want everything from that ends with delay and then we also want distance and we want airtime so now if we uh, look at our flight small data set okay we notice that it is uh, significantly smaller from everything that we have okay so year through day year through day and then anything that ends with delay so departure delay arrival delay and then we still have our distance and we have our airtime. So let's take a closer look at using mutate. So if we want to mutate, use the mutate, use our flight small data set. Now we want to create gain. So we do this just as we would uh, making a basic uh, function. Okay, so gain is equal to departure delay minus arrival delay. And then we also want to uh, calculate up speed. So then we can put a comma here, and we can do speed is uh, going to be equal to our distance divided by our airtime. All right, and then we want to multiply that by 60. And if you notice now, OK, I didn't save this into another data set, but we notice here at the end, it tacks these onto the end, we get gain and speed. Now, we can also uh, refer to uh, these columns that we've created. So let me clear this out and let's grab back what we had before. So notice we're currently creating these uh, data sets, OK? And let me maybe give this a, whoops, let me clear this again. Uh, let's give these a little bit more space, OK? So then we can see what's going on. So the next one, and you know what? Let me actually do this in a little bit cleaner way so you guys can see everything. So notice the first line here, we created gain, then we created speed, and then now let's say that we want to do gain per hour. Okay, and so then now we can actually also go back and grab gain, and we want to divide that out by uh, hours and we're going to change this one to hours hours is going to be airtime uh, divided by 60 okay so now we can actually create functions within our newly created variables okay and so this is again this is very useful to us uh, when we want to add multiple uh, multiple variables and we don't want to have to just run them line after line after line after line we can do them all in one go so notice again they tack them on to the end we have gain is at the bottom here then we have hours then we have gain per hour now our next the next function that we're going to talk about is a uh, transmute okay so transmute now this one is a little bit different okay this will only keep the variables that we created okay so we can go back up and uh, this is the previous uh, 
data set that we created. Now if we change this, instead of mutate, to transmute and let it run, now notice we have only gain hours and uh, gain per hour. Only the variables that we created, it basically removes all of the other variables. And this will be very useful for if you're only interested in keeping your transformations. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's maybe talk about um, useful creation functions. So again, we've talked we've talked about before that we can use uh, arithmetic operator. So again, that is the plus sign, uh, minus sign, multiplication, division, and then we have also our exponent. Okay, but we also have another set. And this is a uh, modular, okay? And these are our modular arithmetic. And so we can do something like this. We can do um, integer division, okay? Uh, and then we can also do do move the remainder, all right? And so we uh, now this is modular. So we usually will call this percent sign. We'll usually call it the mod or modulus. Um, so this allows us again to calculate up just the integer division and just the um, the, the remainder. And I, let me uh, give you a quick example of this. Okay, so we normally would have something like let's say uh, five divided by two. Now notice this is using just our basic division sign. This gives us what? This gives us two point five. Now if we do five and then we use the um, the integer division sign, so mod divide mod, uh, and we do two. Notice now we only get two. We only get this first part here. Now then the next portion, okay, is if we use the mod operator, all right, so the modulus and we're wanting to grab the remainder, we can do five, and then we do mod mod two. Notice this gives us one, because again, if we're doing uh, division like we would when we were in grade school, we would see that actually uh, we would gain um, two goes into five two times, and we would have a full remainder of one. So we can also use those inside of our uh, transmutation. Um, so let's, uh, let me clear this out, and then we'll go through a couple other operators later on, so maybe uh, logs and offsets if we have, have a bit of time. So let's do uh, uh, transmute, and let's do our flights database. Um, and then let's grab, we want our depart time, and we want to create uh, hour is equal to depart time, and then we want this to be divided up, we want the remainder of 100, okay? Because remember, these, these are done, this depart time is gonna be done in, um, I believe it's done in minutes. Okay, so we can also compute the hour and we can compute uh, the minute. So let's do minute. I'll just do min. No, I can't. Okay, so I almost made a mistake there. So I was going to just say, oh, let's just keep it as min. But notice min is actually a function. Okay, so make sure that you don't potentially create a, uh, a variable that overwrites your functions. It'll always, it can always cause you a lot of headache later on. So don't be lazy. I was trying to be lazy. So minute is going to be our depart time. And then we want the aftermath, all right, of 100. Uh, and so let's run that. And now notice here we get our departure time, we get our hour, we get our minute. All right, so now let's go to uh, the next one. So now we're going to be doing logs logs okay and so this can be uh, the natural log and then we can have log base 2 log base 10 um, so I would recommend either using um, uh, log 2 okay because then it's easy to interpret all right so we have for example a difference of 1 on a log scale corresponds to a doubling okay on the original scale and a difference of negative 1 can uh, uh, corresponds to having uh, but also, uh, natural logs have also a tendency to also be very helpful in a lot of ways. Um, now we also have offsets. And so this is, uh, we have lead and we have lag. 
And uh, this is going to allow you to uh, produce a leading variables or lagging variables. And we'll, we'll, let me give you an example of that because that's not as intuitive. So let's say that we have uh, x is going to be from uh, 1 to 10. Okay. Uh, and so if we do lag x, notice what this does. This pushes everything up. Now, those of you that are um, uh, used to doing time series analysis, this is going to be extremely useful to you. Um, so you can so, so you can again create this uh, lag variable, and it'll push everything up. Now we can also do the lead of x, and notice it pushes everything forward. Okay, or well, it just depends on how you want to talk about it. it but um, so here now everything starts with two, and we have an na at the end. So these nas can give you a little bit of issue. Uh, whenever you're running calculations, so remember to remove your NAs whenever you need to. And finally, we also have uh, some other operators here. We have uh, uh, cumulation or cumulative or rolling aggregates. Um, let me clear this out again. So remember, x is 1 to 10. So if we do a cumulative sum in this instance and we have x, notice 1 plus 2 is 3, uh, and then we have now. 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, and so on, all the way up to 55. Now we can also do the cumulative mean. And again, these are extremely useful to us whenever we want to uh, use for time series analysis. Okay, And we will, uh, much, much later on in the series, we're going to be starting to do some more time series analysis. So uh, be patient with that. And if you guys really are interested in it, leave a, a comment below, and we can start working on that a little bit sooner. And so again, notice that. As everything moves forward, we're doing that mean. And again, whenever if you guys would plot this out, it looks very, very nice with our time series analysis. <clears throat> we can also use, uh, as we've seen before, we can use our logical comparisons. Um, and again, so let me just let's reiterate on that logical. Uh, logical comparisons. Let's do logical compare. So less than, less than, equal to, uh, greater than, greater than, equal to, equal to, uh, not equal to, and then uh, equal to. Um, so then, and the next one we also have is very useful is ranking. Now, uh, ranking, okay, so again, there are a bunch of different ranking functions, uh, but we should usually uh, start with something like uh, min rank. And this does the most typical type of ranking, so first, second, third, fourth. And at default, gives you the smallest values, all right, uh, uh, th with the smallest rank. Now we can also use descend to give them the largest values for the smallest rank. So let's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute, but min rank, okay? So y, uh, let's do one, two, two, two in a, three, four, so uh, min rank, and we want it of y. Notice here, okay, we get this, they keep them in order, okay? So one, two, two, na, four, five. So then we can also do the descending of the min rank. Okay, and so again, five, three, three, uh, NA, two, one. Now, if min rank uh, doesn't uh, do what you need it to, there are a bunch of different variants, um, but we won't really go through those a lot here, but I'll just list them out. Um, we have actually a row number, we have a dense rank, uh, we have a percent rank, uh, we have the cumulative distance, and the uh, in tile, so this is for their percentiles. And I would suggest you guys kind of go and look at their help pages. Remember, you can always do help pages with the question mark. And so, for example, let's do row number and hit enter, and it will pop up over here in your help window. And you can actually look at the descriptions as you need. All right, so 
I think that's uh, enough for uh, today, and I will look uh, look to meet you guys later on, um, and we'll be talking about uh, group summaries and the summarize function. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.